Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now when it comes down to firearm safety, keeping your firearms out of the hands of unwanted people is paramount. So whether or not you're going with a safe, a cabinet, or in today's case, a lockbox, there are a number of different options out here. And in today's video, Streamlight stepping into the arena with the speed locker. So there's a bunch of different lock boxes out there, a bunch of different types, a bunch of different locking mechanisms, unlocking mechanisms, the ability to get to your firearms quickly, yet keep them safe when you need to, maybe for travel, maybe in your vehicle, maybe around your home in various locations, the speed locker is going to be an option. So what we're going to do we're gonna take a look at this today in detail. We're gonna go through all of the features. We're gonna take a look at how you actually program the buttons, how this operates, and what types of firearms might be able to fit in here. How big is this? How much room do we have? Well, there's only one way to figure that out, and that's to get into this. So when we get back, we'll go through it in detail. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Streamlight who did provide this for review. And so now as we get into the Streamlight Speed Locker Portable Lockable Storage Container, the first thing I'm going to say, I am absolutely thrilled to see someone like Streamlight getting into this particular genre. Streamlight for me is a company whose products I've come to greatly enjoy, appreciate, and trust in the firearms industry they do a fantastic job with their polymer-based lights. And in today's video, having a locker with similar materials, I think this is absolutely going to be a performer. So you can see on the box a couple of things. This does come with the keypad lock combination set by default. This has push buttons that allow you to mechanically operate the unlocking mechanism. It comes wonderfully packaged and is a good, durable, lockable box for your firearms. Again, utilizing the mechanical keypad, it has fast and direct access to your item. So whether it's firearms or any other sensitive equipment, the speed locker can absolutely provide you with a storage solution. You do not need batteries. That's absolutely awesome. There's no biometrics. That's absolutely awesome. This is purely mechanical. This has an external length of 12.4 inches width of 8.2 inches and height of 2.78 inches. This has an internal length of 8.0 inches and width of 7.1 inches, weighing in at 2.6 pounds, made from a high impact polypropylene. This exhibits 31 mechanical lock combinations, which can be selected by the user. Again, no need for batteries, no need for a power source. This has foam inserts to help secure the items and to keep everything nice and protected. It has a front nameplate, a rugged reinforced handle, the hard shell polymer construction, and mounting holes to allow you to mount this to a rigid surface. This is air travel suitable with the supplied padlock. It's water resistant and it includes everything you need to make the adjustment to the combination. So as you see me working through this, getting it unboxed and just playing with the locking mechanism, I'm doing whatever I can to try to get this to fail. You do need to basically press down on the combination at the exact same time. So in other words, if it's a three button combination, you have to press all three keys at the exact same time. You can also have a one button or two button combination. You can have a four button combination or a five button press, but whatever you do, you need to press the mechanism at the exact same time. Otherwise the unlock will fail. So you can see here again, as I try to stress this, as I play through it, trying to fail the locking mechanism, it seems to be very reliable. If the buttons get stuck, you kind of need to wiggle the case around and press it down or even bang on it to get them to release. But these will definitely release. And in fact, if anything, the fact that sometimes the buttons get stuck if you press the incorrect combination, in my opinion, is a good thing because it would take somebody who's potentially trying to get into the lockbox and not allow them to do that. So in that regard, I think that's a good thing. It can be a little bit confusing and it's just something to keep in consideration. But as you take a look and working at this, pressing the buttons, trying to get it to fail, again, pressing all three buttons on the default combination of one, three, five, 
at the exact same time and that will open quickly and easily and reliably without any issue. So you just need to be a little bit careful as you work your way through this. But again, as I mentioned, the default one, three, five combination, pressing down at the exact same time works, but any other combination will fail. So in my opinion, the speed locker is very effective. It does exactly what you need to keep people out of this, especially if they're not used to this type of device, if they're not used to this type of mechanism, and it does take a little getting used to. I need you to break into this. I don't understand what you want me to do. Break into it. I can't. Why not? So now that you see how this operates, well, how many firearms can fit in here? How large of a firearm? I would say realistically, probably one firearm and some magazines, but you might be able to squeeze in two. Here, this is my Sig P365. Now it's kind of built out sort of like the X macro. So you can see here, both with the optic and a weapon light. That's gonna fit in there just fine at this time. You can see it would pretty much only work with maybe two. In fact, if we're lucky, maybe three, that's gonna be tight. Of course, you can keep a magazine in the gun. So you can see here, they would actually get away with maybe three magazines. This one's gonna be tight. Could it go vertically? You could probably stack these like this if you wanted or had to. And in terms of closing that, yep, that will go back open. So you could realistically probably get about four standard size magazines inside. So of course, keeping one in the firearm. So that's going to work here. A slightly larger firearm. This is my Canik Mete SFT. Also, you can see with the optic and with the light fitting in there fairly tight, but it does fit. And again, we're going to just kind of stack these in here if we're careful. That looks like I could actually, I probably could have got, let's see if that works, because clearly I could put another in here. Doesn't quite want to go. Let's try that again. Yeah. So in reality, that's five magazines. If I had another one, um, you know, with the SIG, I could have done that, but with the Canik, yeah, so that allows basically five magazines. Now, something you're gonna notice as I open this up, the handle creates a little bit of a stand. So in reality, when you fling this open, it kinda does wanna stay open, which is nice. You could crank that all the way back and it sort of presents the weapon and cants it towards you, which is kinda nice. So if we had to in a hurry, fling that open, boom, and we're off. So it is fairly quick. I like that and it does work well. Now, can I fit two firearms in here? I mean, you'd have to have something that's crazy small. This here being the SIG P365. Could I fit two of those in there? That looks like that would go. And in fact, if I took the weapon light off of here, I bet you I could fit the X macro and the P365 at the same time. So two super small firearms, I would say definitely would fit. So if you have two micro compact models, that would probably work. You'd have to keep the magazine inside each one of them, but that could be an option. Now, as we mentioned, this does come default with your 135 combination. Very easy, pretty easy to span your fingers and open that up. But again, that's going to be generic and everybody's going to have that code. So do you want to change that? 
probably I would. And if you need to change this, well, how do you go about doing that? This does come with a tool, which is nice, basically just a simple hex key. And it comes with your information. Again, that hex key, a couple little things here, a sticker, your warranty card, and a lock, which you can use to double lock this for travel or any other need, which is actually really good. And so part of the genius of this is the mechanism on the inside. It's actually really cool how this works. It's a very simple mechanical system, but even though it's simple, that's what makes it brilliant. You'll notice as you go to depress, the number that actually is going to actuate slides down in the upper track and the parts that you're not going to use or the buttons that you're not going to do bottom out in the lower track. And actually, if you go out of sequence, they both move at the same time, which creates this situation where it binds. But if you get all three actuated in harmony and in sequence all the way over, which releases the latch and any combination other than that, it binds up and won't open. But when you're smooth and you press them at the same time, everything moves nicely. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to take the three and the five. I'm gonna drop them down into the bottom, just leveraging this hex key. And that means the combination to open it would technically be only the number one, which I can tell you this is going to be just a little bit tedious, but not a big deal. As I get on the number five here, backing this out, pretty simple. And then I'm gonna have to go with my fingers down into the bottom, that's easy. And threading that into the place, that's actually very, very simple. So that was not a problem, let's just try this out. So in reality, this should be a one, three combination. As I close that up, it was one, three, five before. That fails. So you'll notice that these got stuck down. Now I was nervous for a minute, but let's do that again. If these get stuck down, I just kind of wrapped it and it came back into place. So one, three combo. There you go. So the thing that's tricky and to keep in mind, the one is on the right hand side and the three is in the middle. So this is five, four, three, two, one. As you open that up and you take a look at the inside again, that is the one. So the one, when you're going to unlock it, is on the right hand side. But there you go. And that's even faster. So if you go with a two button combination, that's gonna be mighty quick. But now to show you that you could technically go with a one button combination. So we're gonna remove the number three here, drop that down to the bottom, which again is very simple. They say to get the proper tension, you wanna go finger tight plus about 180 degree rotation on the threads. I'm gonna go a little bit less than that, but that feels to be about right there. And at this point, a single button Yep. I can't say I suggest that, but you can certainly do it. Now in a mere matter of seconds, I have reverted this back to the three digit combo. So again, the one, three, five, very simple. The most, and I guess what I would say similar lock box that I've used is the stop box. It has a very similar concept in terms of the button mechanism. It's a mechanical system, and this does allow you very fast access to your firearm. It's a little bit tricky. You kind of need to know how to open these, and you can see it is very fast. However, what I can say is the stop box is not nearly as robust. It's nice. I like it a lot. It's very, uh, I guess, flexible flexible for what I need it to be. It's thin, it's low profile, but it's also a little bit limited. Now, in terms of the speed to get these open, we're gonna do a real quick side-by-side. -side. Let's do that again. Ready, go. Okay, now again with the speed locker, ready, go. Pretty similar. 
So you can see these clearly open with a different operation. Here I'm reaching to the top and pulling this over. Here I'm reaching down to the bottom and flipping this up. So it's gonna be a little bit different in terms of how you operate these. Again, both have pros and cons. And then depending on where you stash these, that may have an impact on how you would go to operate these in which you would prefer. But in either case, very good. What I can tell you is the speed locker definitely having a little more room. You can see when I put the full-sized handgun in the stop box, it gets tight and in fact, barely and if it even allows me to close this in the current configuration, which I feel like it's really not going to go. So I can't really fit my full-sized handgun in there, which is definitely going to be a limitation if I was going to use this in my vehicle and had to go to a place where, you know, I really had to lock this up for the time being, I would not be able to do that if I was carrying my full-size handgun. But I can with the speed locker, so that is nice. Another thing worth pointing out, you can definitely put a cable on the stop box you can also put the lock or a cable through the speed locker, so leveraging the holes. But the other thing that I like here is you can actually lock this down or screw this to a surface if you want. There are holes in the handle. You can put screws through there. And then on the inside, if you look, and it's going to be almost impossible to see, but there are some holes down inside where you could put some screws and they would actually go through the base of this and allow you to screw this onto a surface, which is awesome. Some little rubberized feet here in the corners, just very nicely done. So that is the Speed Locker, just an awesome, awesome offering from Streamlight. I'm totally excited to have this. This is a very useful piece of kit. So from around my house, the ability to keep my firearm safe, slide it under the bed, slide it in my closet if I needed to, in my vehicle, under the seat, something like that, or even in travel, airplane, or whatnot, this is going to work absolutely fantastic. So to the people at Streamlight, very nicely done. Now moving forward, I would have to think we're absolutely going to see different sizes, probably larger. This here being the model 7080, I could almost see them automatically making another one of these just a larger size. I mean, that's going to be awesome. This is so stout robust, just good and sturdy. Everything Streamlight does is beefy and especially when it comes to their polymer, just very well done. I would trust this, absolutely trust this. Now, there is a little subtlety. I feel like what we're seeing here is a tiny little hole just for atmosphere. That's probably a good thing, especially if you're gonna use this to travel and it's in an airplane, you would want that. So that's cool. The little features like the ability to lock this and then screw everything down, that's awesome. Big heavy duty hinges, which is great. And just an awesome mechanism when you really look at the mechanism that allows you to change the combination it's slick, it's very simple, it's intuitive, and it's extremely fast to change the combination. I can't necessarily say that about the competition. And so again, to the people at Streamlight, thank you so much for providing this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor. Take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is all my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found that a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.